Social media is a valuable tool, but when you're starting off your comic, chances are that you don't have a very big following. Good news is that you don't necessarily need social media to gain readers on Webtoon Canvas, and I'm going to tell you how. It's not anything super fancy, and really, you'll want to focus on these tips before promoting your comic on social media anyway. This is knowledge I've pieced together over the past couple of years from learning from other creators and my own experiences so far on the platform. I'm hoping it will help and maybe put you at ease. You don't have to use social media to grow your audience. Instead, focus on making a quality comic that you and your readers will enjoy. In other words, you're going to make your comic do the heavy lifting for you. Here's how. So here are the eight ways to gain readers without social media. And I'll go into detail on each one, so feel free to skip around or watch the whole video while I paint this mermaid piece. Clear title. A clear title should tell the readers what they can expect in your story. It doesn't always have to be short, but it does have to be memorable. A lot of Arthur, author, Arthurs, Arthurs, a lot of Arthurs will use character name as a title or a main theme for the story. So here's a couple of examples. Remarried Empress, a story about an empress who drops her cheating ass husband and remarries the king from another empire. Suitor Armor. A play on words that I absolutely love about a living suit of armor who most definitely falls in love with a main girl who's a lady in waiting. Ghost Bats, an intergalactic rock band named Ghost Bats. All of those titles are really memorable because they reflect the content of their stories, so that's just something to keep in mind. Smart Genre Choice Webtoon gives you a main genre and an optional second genre. Always have both. I don't really see a way where this doesn't help you. The main takeaways for this are to pick a genre that reflects your story currently, as in what's posted publicly. Not your outlines that might have a totally different genre later in your story. Much like making videos on YouTube, you want your genres to accurately describe your story in its current state. And as you get more episodes out there, you can adjust your genres accordingly. For example, my comic Fairy Lantern is currently in the romance category as the main genre. And then it also sits in a smaller genre called heartwarming. Both genres reflect my comic's current point in the story, but later down the road, it could also sit in action-adventure, or slice of life, or even thriller. I'm, <laughs> I'm mostly kidding about thriller, but right now, with what's currently posted out there, it would make no sense for me to put it in those genres. And quite frankly, it would confuse the readers who chose to read it after seeing it in a genre that didn't accurately reflect it. There's nothing action-y going on in my comic right now that would warrant it being in an action genre. But what if my comic doesn't fit in any of the current genres that Webtoon or other platforms provide? Well... <laughs> Pick the genres that are close enough, and then I'll tell you what you can do in the next tip. And hopefully we'll see some more genre expansion from these comic platforms sometime soon. Clear Summary Just like with clickbait on YouTube, you'll also want your summary to accurately reflect your story, but in an eye-catching and intriguing way. Avoid dropping too many names and places in your summary. While those things mean a lot to you, they mean absolutely nothing to your new potential readers, because they don't have the context yet, so keep it simple. Walter Osley breaks down good summaries in quite a few of his Canvas review videos, and since I can't remember exactly which one, you'll just have to watch them all. <laughs> I'll put a link down in the description for you to check out later, but seriously, it's great advice from him and worth a uh, binge session or two. Hey! person who doesn't have a genre. I didn't forget about you. So a cool thing about your summary is that you can tell your potential new readers what your genre is in here, especially if it's one of the more obscure genres that isn't covered on the platforms currently. I would suggest putting it at the end of the summary. For example, there is sadly not a current genre for BL or GL comics, but you can put it in your summary to let the readers know and that way the readers who are looking for it can find it just a little easier. Does anyone here read fanfiction? If you've ever been on AO3, aka Archive of Our Own, 
you'll probably know what I'm going to talk about, but there's this neat tagging culture over there. I find myself reading these tags more than the summaries half the time because it gives me a much clearer idea of what to expect with any given story on there. It's pretty wild. So here's an example. There's tags on there for stories like enemies to lovers, childhood friends, tooth rotting fluff, angst, hurt comfort, slow burn, humor. There, there's so many. I know most of my examples lean more towards the romance and drama genres, but check out a fandom or two that has similar themes to your comic and see what types of tags people use. And then with this knowledge, try to incorporate some of those words into your summary in an organic way. Or even just list a couple at the end of your summary if, if you're lazy. I want to stress the importance of putting any extra info you have at the end of your summary because you want your potential reader to actually read your summary first and then they can see all the extra info that you have that you have for them at the end. And speaking of extra info, if you have a consistent posting schedule, which I highly recommend you do, you'll want to let your readers know in your summary when they can expect updates. This can be updates Mondays around 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or updates once a month, or new episode every two weeks. And if you're currently on break, let your readers know in the summary too, like an estimated return date or just saying, currently on break. Either way, this lets your readers know what's up and when they can roughly expect you to be back or if they should just wait, you know? So in my case, I'm taking a break to work on some more background heavy episodes and I'm shooting to be back posting August 1st. So wish me luck. Backgrounds are hard. Thumbnail. The thumbnail is arguably the most important thing you can do for getting your comic noticed. Aside from actually making your comic, that is. I touched on this in a previous video, but I'll say it all again here. The quick tips to remember when making a pop and thumbnail are contrast, curiosity, color, clarity, and creative. Contrast. The character should pop out from the background in your thumbnail. In terms of value, avoid too many midtones and strive to have dark darks and light lights. High contrast naturally draws your eye, so it's definitely something to take advantage of when making your thumbnail. Curiosity. Much like YouTube thumbnails, your comic thumbnail is the first impression you have for potential readers. So make a thumbnail that sparks some curiosity. If a reader asks themselves, what is that character doing? Or what are they holding? Where are they looking? Why is half of their face in shadow? Basically, see if your thumbnail sparks a question. And if it does, chances are the readers are already tapping on your title and now they're reading your comic summary. Color. Color is just awesome. I'm not an expert on color theory or anything, but really pick the best colors from your comic and see what makes your stand your stand your <laughs> see what makes your thumbnail stand out and compare it to other thumbnails you see in your genre. What separates yours? For example, the majority of the romance category on Webtoon Canvas is a sea of pinks and pastels, which is totally fine by the way. If your comic is not pink and pastels, it might stand out more in that category. You can also use color to kind of convey a different mood in your thumbnail. So just something to think about. I don't really have much else to say on it because I'm not like an expert in that field, but yeah. So moving on. Clarity. Your thumbnail needs to be clear. Like you can tell what's going on even at its small size or at a quick little glance. That means having clear forms or silhouettes that stand out against the background. It also means leaning towards a less busy thumbnail. If you want to show off a ton of detail in your thumbnail, make sure there is a clear focal point to draw your eye towards and give, the less, give less detail on the rest. You've probably heard of the 80-20 rule somewhere, but put 80% of your detail and effort into just about 20% of the whole drawing and leave the rest. For example, in this mermaid piece that I'm working on in the time lapse, I chose to focus mostly on their expressions and then I fanned out to their fins. No pun intended there. <laughs> but most of the effort and the detail is concentrated in just that small section near their faces. Creative. This goes hand in hand with curiosity. Think about what kind of moment you're going to snapshot in this thumbnail. 
give the characters some expression, either facial expressions or body expressions. Just don't have them sit there staring like a soulless doll. Staling? Staling. <laughs> don't let your <laughs> don't let your thumbnail be stale. <laughs> uh, uh. Give the characters some expression, either facial expressions, body expressions, or something. Just don't have them s sitting there staring like a soulless doll, unless that's exactly what you're going for because your genre is horror or something. If it's romance, you can play off of the chemistry between the main leads. For comedy, it could be a hilarious exchange or maybe a devious smirk from the main character. An action comic might have the character looking like they're in motion, or maybe their hair is blowing in the breeze, or even having some Super Saiyan level power up complete with glowy eyes. Again, check out what kind of thumbnails already live in your genre and see if you can apply some of the same ideas with your own twist to it. What I've noticed from the romance category is that most of the popular comic thumbnails have their main characters together in close proximity, either teasing the eventual relationship or future scene in that comic. There are some outliers that have single characters in the thumbnail, but I've noticed that those were also the ones where the main lead has multiple love interests, so it makes sense. So again, the takeaway there is to observe patterns and see where you can apply it to your own comic thumbnail. Thumbnails are also a great way to tell a potential reader what your genre might be without even having to say it. The picture is worth a thousand words after all. Do make sure that your thumbnail art matches up with the art in your comic. You don't want to be that kind of bad clickbait. Instead, be the good kind of clickbait, the kind that sparks intrigue and also delivers on the promise of the thumbnail. But what if my art style has changed a lot since my first episode and when I decided to make the new thumbnail? That's fine. If your most current episode reflects the same art style as your new thumbnail, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Most readers expect the art to change the longer the comic runs. It's a natural progression, so just breathe. It's okay. Moving on. Impactful first episodes. If you haven't already checked out Canvas Academy and the other resources that Webtoon has available for creators, one of the things they suggest across the board is that the first three episodes need to be impactful and have an effective hook. This is because Webtoon's app helps you out by prompting the reader to subscribe to the comic by the third episode. So it's in your best interest to put maximum effort into those first three episodes. Hey, Brie, that's, uh, that's kind of vague. What do you mean by that? Think of the good animes that get your attention right in the first episode. What are they doing? They're usually introducing a character or characters to root for or to hate, and then they pose some kind of question for the readers. It could be a dilemma or even just something mundane, but somehow the readers want to know what happens next. It doesn't have to be an overarching plot, just a question that drives the readers through the next episode or two. And then the question is answered, but when it's answered, it opens up a whole new set of questions, and then before you know it, you've binged the whole thing. I, I mean, the readers. The readers have binged the whole thing. Yeah. I'm totally not guilty of reading a comic at 3 a.m. until the sun rises. Don't call me out like that. <coughs> anyway. These first few episodes should also be max effort, which I think I already said that, but I'll say it again. They don't have to be perfect. You want to actually post your comic after all, but do try to put in your personal best at the time into it. If you go the extra mile, the readers can tell, and it builds trust in you as the comic's creator. Does this mean I have to go back and remake the first few episodes of my comic? No. Only if you really want to. In my case, I... Honestly, I really want to. <laughs> I want to rework part one of my prologue, which is just one part of the prologue, to expand a few scenes and add in some cool teasers that I was hesitant to put in initially because I wasn't 100% sure of the direction that I wanted to go in the time of uh, launching my comic. So, and I wanted that flexibility at the time. But now that I'm more confident in where my story is heading, I can comfortably change this part and update it. But this is a great thing to consider if you haven't launched your comic just yet. Next tip, encourage comments. 
The one way to gain readers is to actually talk to them. Shocking, I know. Encouraging your readers to leave a comment is a great way to have more engagement on your comic and establish a good relationship with the people who care about your characters too. I find encouraging comments help me stay motivated and energized to work on my comic. I would suggest prompting comments at the end of the episode, but within the actual comic body itself. Author's notes tend to get lost to the readers, it seems, so putting in the actual comic, putting a prompt, sorry, so putting a prompt for comments in the actual comic at the end creates a call to action to have your readers chime in. It can be a random prompt or something related to the episode posted, or it could even just be an update from you. Either way, the goal here is to help build a nice community around your comic, and encouraging the readers to comment is a great way to do that. Another way to encourage comments is to feature a few of your favorite ones from the previous episode at the end of the next one. A creator who immediately comes to mind is I'm Just Gally, the creator of Otaku times Idiot equals Love. At the end of every episode, they have this cute little uh, feature section that features their favorite, like top three favorite comments, and they don't have to be the top comment on the actual episode itself, but they're just the ones that the creator loves and wanted to feature. And I found that to be like something really cool and definitely something that I kind of want to jump on. Next tip. Fun author's note. On a similar note, using your author's note section to leave a funny comment yourself is another great way to engage your readers and help foster that community. I found that it's also a sneaky way to see if your readers actually pay attention to the author note section. And the more gems you leave there over time, the more conditioned your readers will be to look for it. Some extra tips for author's notes. While it does give you quite a big text box to work with, I would suggest keeping your author's note down to one to two sentences max. The bigger the text block, the shorter the attention span, especially if your readers are wanting to move on to the next episode because you made it a cliffhanger or something. If you want to promote something like a Patreon, YouTube channel, merch store, or something like that, I would suggest keeping that at the end of the actual body of your comic instead of in the author's note for visibility's sake because again, the author's note section is often overlooked. So it's only on Canvas. They don't have that for Webtoons Originals. So a lot of people just don't even know to look at it. But if they do and they find your funny little comment, it's like an awesome little treasure. So keep that in mind. All right, last tip, and then there's gonna be a little bonus round of extra goodies. Replying to your comments. I'm always surprised at the number of smaller comics that don't have the creators replying to the comments on their episodes. We're in a unique position where the readers get to directly interact and leave feedback to your comic, and I think that can be a very special thing. If you want more people to read your comic, cherish the ones who are already here and reading it, and thank them for reading. It doesn't have to be anything fancy if you don't have the time. Just simply acknowledge that you've read their comments with an emoji or two, or a small thanks, or even just put it in the body of your comic for the next episode to just say, you know, thank you. And like I said in an earlier tip, you can also highlight some of your favorite comments and feature them in the next episode. And especially since this video doesn't focus on the social media aspect, replying to your comments and cherishing your readers is literally going to help your comic grow on the platform without social media. So again, quick recap of ways to gain readers on Webtoon Canvas without social media. And there'll be a bonus round after this. Clear title, smart genre choices, a snappy summary with an update schedule, eye-catching thumbnail, impactful first episodes, encourage comments, have a fun author's note, and reply to all your comments. Some bonus round tips to add. Get creative with your episode titles. I touched on this in a previous video, but I'll say it here again. Your episode titles are another point for curiosity for your potential readers, and they offer a small glance at what might be the content for that episode. Especially if the reader happens to be on a mobile device, they'll get a notification of when your comic updates, 
and it usually includes the first couple words from your episode title, so use it to your advantage. It might mean that they click on your comic first in a sea of updates. If you're stumped on what to name your episodes, a good fallback is to just take a line of dialogue from the episode to use as the title. That way it's not clickbait because it actually does show up in the episode. Also, since we're talking about episodes, it's another good practice to pair that title with a panel from your episode for the thumbnail. So basically, don't have the same thumbnails for each and every update, and do put some effort here. It helps your reader go back and find the episodes that they want to reread easier. That's it for bonus tips. Again, social media can be a great tool to help you gain readers on your comic, but I do think that following these tips first and making sure that you have solid content will help you grow readers on the platform natively. Naturally? Naturally. There we go. I started out with only about a thousand followers on uh, various social media, so like Twitch, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and like all these other platforms, and I can really attest to like the social media didn't really help me grow at all, and actually became the opposite where my comic actually has helped me grow my social media. So I hope that these uh, tips that I left you guys with will uh, suit you well, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! So also, if you are interested in having this as a wallpaper, it is available to all of my patrons on Patreon. If you want to see a comic episode being made from start to finish, feel free to click on this video right here. And if there's not a video that looks like that right there, then you're early. Sorry. <laughs> but thank you for being early. Bye for real. See you later.